So Excel is capable of a lot more than a lot of people think. And today I wanted to show you an example I quickly put together that illustrates some of what it can be and some of what I think a lot of people are missing out on when they use it because we just don't get trained at all about how to use these features when people teach us about Excel. Let me jump right into it and show you this example. So this is a little sales dashboard I put together. Um, looks pretty cool. It's very visually intensive. It's kind of the concept here. And it's just using some sample data. This is some financial data from uh, Microsoft. They've got some sample financial data for Power BI, but no reason you can't download it and use it for Excel. And pivot tables, which are then used to make pivot charts. If you're not familiar with pivot tables and pivot charts, it's the first thing you should go learn if you are getting into Excel. Uh, a little bit of processing. I pull like the most recent values and I do some stuff like showing month over month changes. Also pretty simple stuff that everybody learns in Excel. Nothing crazy there. Um, and it comes together and it makes this. A lot of people see this and they're like, whoa, wait, wait, there's a big jump there. You went from pivot tables and pivot charts to this, like what happened? And it is not as crazy as you might think. So if you've ever used Photoshop um, or you've ever used Sketch or you've ever used pretty much any image editor, uh, give me a second here, you're probably familiar with the idea of layers. Layers are a concept when you're doing visual design. You have an element on top of another element on top of another element. It's very common in PowerPoint. PowerPoint's a system where people use layers. If you ever had to click on something and hit send to back so that it shows up behind your other stuff, that's layers. And Excel has the concept of layers. So let's show you. These are all of my layers in this dashboard. There's a lot of them. This, this example has a lot. Most won't have this many, but to create the visual effects, I need a lot of them. And they all come together to create this. This cool, beautiful effect. And I'm doing that using shapes primarily. So you see these circles in the background. You see these kind of grayish um, glassy overlays. These are all just shapes. And it's under the insert tab. We've got shapes. And these shapes can then be styled. You can set the background. You can set the outline, all that kind of stuff to create any effect you want. In this case, I'm using a gradient. And the gradient's just gray. That's fairly transparent to another gray that's a little bit less transparent. That's it. Um, so I sort of outline a background shape. In this case, I dropped in a geo chart to because it's geo data, and I think it kind of helps uh, as a way to frame what we're looking at. And I also thought about my layout a little bit. So I kind of blocked these out. I thought, okay, I know I want my sales data to be the focus here. So we're going to have monthly sales aggregate. That's going to be up top left. And everything else is going to kind of be expanding on that with the geo chart as the focus, because I know I want to break it down by region. And I kind of figured out where I wanted everything to go. Then for our big, beautiful text areas here, I did not if you're, if you're used to Excel, you click into a cell, you add some text, right? You format that text, uh, and it's there, and you can see it. The problem is that forces you into the cell grid layout, and the cell grid layout is kind of a trap people fall into in Excel. It isn't the only way that you can add data, and it limits you because grids tend to be very rigid. They don't allow a lot of visual flexibility. So I don't do that. What I do is these, this is a, there is a rectangle that has been inserted here. It's a transparent rectangle. I've set it to not have any fill color and not have a line color. So no outline, no, no color in the middle. And then what I've done is gone up here to the, when it's selected, I've gone to the function bar here and I've typed in a reference to a cell. And what that does is it makes it so this rectangle always shows whatever values in that cell. And the cell is from my pivot tables. And that allows me to move this around. I can drag it. I can drop it. I can do whatever I want with it. I can style it. And I have the flexibility to adjust my layout really, really easily. I'm not stuck with this being in one individual cell that I'm then having to adjust the width and height of, and then that affects everything else on the page. I've left all that behind, and I'm using free, free floating elements on the page. The rest of these charts are nothing fancy. These are line charts. This is a bar chart. Right? This is a horizontal line, a horizontal bar chart. They're standard um, pivot charts. If you've ever created a pivot chart, it's not too hard. And 
uh, you style it. In this case, I've styled them by removing their axes, removing reference lines, making them transparent so that they're just a trend line. Because for this dashboard, I think a trend line is enough to still be useful and have an effect. Um, the only other big thing on this page really are the slicers. And if you have noticed slicers, slicers are um, essentially just filters for pivot tables. Uh, when you click into a pivot table, it's very easy. You go to insert, and then you have the option to insert a slicer here or a timeline. A timeline's like a, just a date selection option. Um, and you do whatever you want to, let's see, whatever you want to filter by, you select it. It drops a slicer in. And when your slicer's on the page, you can style it, move it around, do whatever you want. And you can right click it, go to report connections and select which pivot tables or which charts you want that filter to affect. That's the basic concept. So I've added a couple of those in here and that allows us to segment our data. It makes this whole thing useful. It goes from a boring static dashboard to a cool interactive dynamic dashboard that you can use to look at your data from a different bunch of different views. You can search by segment and you can search by product and combine those together and get deeper insights into how your performance is across all of these different regions. So that's it. There's, there's no crazy concepts here. It's a lot of visual design, sure. And if you're not familiar with visual design, that's a skill you'll have to develop. But the actual Excel functionality is probably something you already know about and you're already familiar with. Um, almost anyone can do this. So if you want this template, uh, I'll send it out in my newsletter probably in the next week or two. Um, you can, I'll put a link to the newsletter below if you want that. And the reason I say that is the best way to learn this stuff, especially the visual design element, is to get a sample file where somebody's already done all this stuff and then click in and just start to kind of dissect it and look at the pieces. So the first time I've learned Photoshop, the first time I learned Excel, the first time I learned PowerPoint, I just got really cool templates and I just kind of pull, started pulling them apart. You know, if there was a shape, I clicked into the shape. I looked at what the fill is. I looked at what the line colors were, the effects that were applied, the size. Um, if there was a chart, I clicked into the chart. I looked at what the how the chart was built, what the pieces were, what are the fields that were used to build it? How is it formatted? Um, I would start to think about the layout and see the parts of the layout and kind of look at, okay, how does somebody align these things properly? How does somebody get all that going? And and the sample file is just, just the easiest way to do that. It gives you a jumping off point so that it's a lot easier for you to learn. Uh, so I highly suggest you do that. It doesn't need to be mine. Go find any sample dashboards and use those, but just start breaking apart all the little pieces. Um, I have a giant set of dashboard samples and it's like the historical ones that have been sent out in my newsletter plus a big giant dashboard kit that I put together that you can go and get on my website if you want it. It's, I think, 99 bucks or something like that. Um, but again, if you don't have that kind of money and you still want to do this, feel free to sign up for the newsletter and I'll send you free templates each month that are smaller and maybe not as extensive, but that you can use. Or just Google free Excel templates, see what you find, download them, start playing with them. It's definitely the best way to learn. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. Uh, feel free to subscribe. I'll be sharing more of these going a little bit more in depth into how I actually build them and how I design them. Um, so check out the channel. I uh, can't wait to share more with you. Thanks so much.